If you like this video, why not subscribe? Hey everybody, welcome back to the final installment, I promise, of what has turned into kind of a Pimp My Rig series. We're taking the Frugal Rig here, uh, which is built up on the Frugal Cage from a couple of months ago. And we're gonna talk about these Sony battery cradles that I know I've talked about them before, but if you remember from last week, uh, I used this one here to power my camera. This is the one actually powering my monitor. And I mentioned how that these uh, cradles were allowing the equipment to leach power from the batteries, even though the equipment was off. And the only way to stop that was to pull the plugs or take the uh, batteries off. But if you didn't want to do that, I wanted to find some better way of doing it. So I installed these hardware switches here, these toggle switches, which will allow you to disconnect the uh, cradles from the battery, stopping that problem so you can leave the batteries on. Now, this is a really simple and easy project, but it is a soldering project. So if you're unfamiliar with how to solder things, you might want to look that up before you attempt this. Uh, but I'm keeping it pretty simple, hopefully, and easy to follow. If you're wondering about any of the tools that I'm using or the parts, they're all listed below in the description if you're wondering. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, the first thing you want to do is take this thing apart, and we're going to remove, remove the bracket if you have it connected. Take that off. Also remove the Velcro strap. And on the back, there are these two holes right here that have a couple Phillips head screws, some small ones. So take your uh, small screwdriver, Phillips head, precision screwdriver, and we're going to take those off. Okay, now comes the fun part to try and get uh, the case apart. It's actually snapped together once the screws are out, uh, but getting it separate can be a challenge. So we're going to use these. Uh, basically cards. These are card keys from a hotel. You can use an old credit card, old debit card, whatever. So right by the power connector, I'm pulling it apart with my fingernails and inserting one of the cards right there to help keep it apart. And it's going to open up the sides and the back here a little bit. You're going to have to get your fingernails in there, separate it, and then jam the card in. Okay, once you have the case apart, you then need to uh, work out the power connector. It's got connected to a little circuit board right there. You can kind of see, you just need to work it out. It's not screwed in, but you need to work it out with your thumb. And it'll pop out. Next thing you want to do is remove the circuit board using, again, the small Phillips screwdriver. Now since we're going to install the switch here where the wheel is, uh, and that's going to come out in just a minute, uh, we're going to tap into this black wire right here. You've got a black wire and a white wire. That's the power cables coming from the battery. I'm cutting it about halfway in between the circuit board and the battery receptacle, the battery connector. Okay, so now we're going to prep those wires for soldering by tinning them, which is just taking some solder and putting it on the end of the wires. Okay, so now both of these wires are tinned or they have some solder on them, so they'll easily connect or connect more easily to our extension wire, which is this. And this is just a wire that I took from a 9 volt battery cap. Uh, that I cut off and now I'm going to cut it in half so I can get a couple of short wires to make the extension wires for these so I can connect the switch. And I'm going to tin both sides of these as well so they'll solder together easily. Okay, so now I'm going to attach the extension wires to the wires on the battery cradle. Alright, now if you're really slick, you've got some heat shrink tubing you could put over these uh, connections. However, I am not so slick, so I'm just going to use electrical tape. It's not pretty, but should do the job so they don't get any shorts where you don't want them. Okay, next we've got our switch here, which I like this Radio Shack switch, which you'll find 
the part number in the description, just like all the parts in this video, because it's a solid switch and it's got some nice big uh, connections that are looped so that I can feed the uh, wires right into them and uh, solder them right up without too much trouble. I'm just putting the wire through the loop and then filling the hole with solder. Okay, so now's a good time to test out your switch. So we're going to load up the battery. And flip the switch. Hopefully it's off right now because the light is off. Don't forget you've got uh, your fuse here, which if you've left it like I have, in the back of the case, uh, nothing is going to work. Okay, so now let's uh, make some room for the switch. I'm going to remove this wheel here, which will give a nice little port, which we can attach the switch to and stick it out of the case. Use my Phillips head screwdriver again. And the wheel is sort of stuck in there. You kind of have to pry it out with a screwdriver. Let's go ahead and put the circuit board back into the case with the screws that came with it. Okay, it's back together. I'm going to check the orientation of where the switch is going to come out. Uh, which basically you can just check where the power coupler comes out, how it lines up right here in these slots. You can pretty much eyeball it. Uh, so in order to mount it on the side of the case here through this open slot we've created, uh, I'm going to first take off all the hardware, all the mounting hardware that's on the switch right here. Probably should, should have done that before, but uh, let me get a, this is a number eight wrench. I'm going to take all the mounting hardware off of the switch. I'm going to poke it out about in the middle of this slot here. And the first thing I'm going to put on, put on it is this washer here. It's a slotted washer, or actually it has a little... Uh, mounting thing on it so it slides right over the top of the uh, switch here. It has a little groove so it mounts in the same position. Then I'm going to put the star washer on and then one of the nuts. Then I'll take the wrench and tighten it gently. I'll line up the power connector circuit board with its slot. Let's see, I think I need to remove fuse since that's going to have to go back in through the top with this little uh, little door there and actually before I close this here I'm going to put another piece of tape right over the switch contacts here just to protect them that much more you should have two tabs on the LED light side right here notice these are opposite of the screw holes but you line up these two tabs and they'll go right together like this and you can press the case back together it should snap into place there you go. Now all you have to do is put these two screws back in, put your Velcro strap back in, and your little uh, angled bar if you need it. Okay, now if you do this hack, there's a couple things you need to be aware of. The first, I think, is the most obvious, and that is you are losing your quarter 20 threaded mount on the bottom of your battery cradle because you are pulling out the knob, the threaded knob, and you're putting in a switch. So that is no longer a way to mount your cradle to your rig if you're doing that. If you are doing that and you still need that threaded mount, that threaded knob, you're going to have to put your switch somewhere else, which probably means drilling a hole and finding space for it, which I preferred this method because the hole's already there and there was space there, so that's what I used. Um, I am putting them in these uh, cell phone holders here, so there is a threaded mount on those. That's how I'm attaching it to my rig. Now, there was another problem I created by putting a switch here because there was no longer a way to mount the battery cradle centered on the cell phone mount because the switch would interfere with the cell phone mount. So I had to mount the cradles farther back in the mount for it to work properly. Not a big deal because once I put the batteries in, everything was balanced properly and it worked just great and that's what I've done. So if you're wondering again about any of the parts or tools that I've used, they're all in the description below for your perusal. And if you're interested in a project like this or others, please check out thefrugalfilmmaker.com and stay tuned next week when we talk about another project which is completely different and unrelated to the frugal rig. Bye-bye.
they lean the cradle forward and provide enough balance to where it's not even a problem. Uh, but the, if it's perfect, huh? That wasn't me.